Welcome to the Parent Life Podcast, a weekly resource addressing critical topics for raising Christian children. Uh, we are a ministry of Fruit Cove Baptist Church here in Jacksonville, Florida. My name is Jason Stanlin, and I am the middle school pastor here at Fruit Cove Baptist. Today is episode five, and we're discussing being uh, intentional about raising and discipling your children to be godly. And joining us today is Pastor Jonathan Wilson again. He's our missions and family ministries pastor. So thank you for being here. So Jonathan, uh, I feel like last time we did a good job when we established, is it ethical to raise Christian children? But okay, like let, let's go to the next step. What does that mean? What does that look like? Where do I start? Good question. Uh, once again, Jason, I, and I think the key word when we talk about where do I start in discipling my children is simply the word start. Right. <laughs> uh, I would say if I have three seconds to answer this question, it is just start. Now, as parents listening to this, we're probably at one of several levels, and I'm going to name four different levels. There may be more, but uh, I think most of us would fit into one of these four categories. Uh, the first would be, we're not sure where to begin, where to start, because we really have never thought about right. it. We may be new to our faith, our, our, our uh, life, you know, busyness may have us off track uh, in our own spiritual maturity, so we just haven't thought about discipling our kids. Or secondly, we've thought about it, but we're suffering from what is basically the paralysis of analysis. And by, by that, I mean there are too many resources. And oh, okay. uh, sometimes even, even in our church, we've talked about this on staff, there are so many good things Sometimes a person doesn't know where to start, mm -hmm. and especially if you have uh, a preschooler, an elementary, right. a, a student in, in middle school and high Each school. Has different needs. So right. many resources right. and tools, and so we're 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 paralyzed by all the resources. Yeah, so we don't do anything. Right. So we stall out. Um, third, we may have tried some things, but we've gained no traction. Uh, yeah. Nothing Dang seems it. to be working, <laughs> and so again, I use the word we, we've stalled out. Right. And then fourth, let's jump ahead. Um, there may be some of us out there listening who are in a regular rhythm of discipling right. on a day-to-day, moment-by-moment basis. And, mm -hmm. and that's not saying that we're perfect or that we've arrived, but we have come to the point where we, we know it's important. We've set aside time to prepare for it and to do it, and it's part of our family day-to-day -day rhythm. Yeah, it's just the rhythm, yeah. So we're, we're in one of those four areas, I, I do think. So how do we take the next step we start? We, we've got to take that next step. And uh, before we get to some uh, specific steps and talk about some particular resources that may help us in, in this, uh, we need to realize that as followers of Jesus, we are called to live the lives He's called us to live. And, and by that, our life examples are the greatest influence our children will ever see, right. will ever hear. It's, it's how we live our lives. Now, secondly, we are charged with instilling God's Word into the hearts of our children, speaking God's Word, speaking God's truth into their lives and into their hearts. But here's the deal. If we focus on one and not the other, there's a disconnect. Yeah. If, if we are the parent who every morning at 7 o'clock before we go to school and work, we have a 30-minute Bible study with, with our family, right. we can check that box. <laughs> but if our home is, is full of animosity or vulgar language or actions that are not pleasing right. to, to God, there's a disconnect. Yeah. And, and the older our children get they're gonna catch on and they're gonna notice that something is not right. So here's what I wanna encourage parents to do as far as some practical steps of, of being intentional in discipling our children. We need to look at the times that are already uh, spent together as families. We use a word on staff, don't we, sometimes, where we talk about intersection, not addition. Right. We wanna intersect with uh, some of the rhythms of life that, that we're already used to. Yeah. So mealtimes. Right. I, I hope that we prioritize getting together as a family, either at breakfast or at lunch or at dinner, at least a couple of times a week. Now, I know yeah. we're all busy, but we all got to eat. And you got to carve out the time to do something as a family, right? Be intentional to, to 
break bread together. So at meal times, at, at institute a prayer time, you know, to, mm-hmm. to not only thank God for the food, but pray for a specific family. Uh, you know, uh, right now we're, we're, we're just a, a few weeks removed from Christmas. And one thing that our family does, uh, and I give my wife credit for this, but you know, we get a lot of Christmas cards. Mm-hmm. And so we don't just throw those away. She punches it, puts it in a binder, and she, or, she she's a great organizer. She organizes it by friends, or excuse me, family, and then friends. And we take a different family and go through those cards uh, for the next few weeks, actually for a couple of months, and pray Super for simple. those individuals during our prayer time. That's easy. That's doable. Right. And, it, and it's a visual for your children to, right. to see how God has blessed us with, with family and with friends. So in our conversations, when we are taking our children to school or picking them up or extracurricular activities, here's something that we got to realize. Too often, we let other people and other mediums dictate what we're listening to and what we're talking about. And by that, I mean simply, we could just have the radio on. It it could be a talk show or it could be Mm -hmm. one of our favorite music stations. And we may not be thinking much of it, but why don't we use that time? Let's be intentional in conversations. And I'm gonna give you a tool here in a moment to, to help you do that with our children while they're a captive audience. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if they don't have their license yet, they're riding around with us. So right. let's let's use those opportunities to, to speak truth into their lives. Now, the last thing I really want to talk about is, um, is carving out regular time as a family to sit down and read and study God's Word together. I want to share a passage. This is from Psalm chapter 78. I'm going to pick up with verse 4, and it says this, We will tell the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and and His might and the wonders that He has done. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which He commanded our fathers to teach to their children that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God but keep his commandments. Mm-hmm. So there's a, a real biblical example of one generation speaking into another generation, speaking into another generation, right. Going the truths it. of God's word. So how do we do that? We got to start. Let me give some uh, practical resources. Uh, this is something our family went through not too long ago. It's called 40 Days of a Joy-Filled Life. And what I like about this resource, Jason, it focuses on Philippians 4, uh, verse 8, and uh, takes 40 days to go through this devotion. Every age, uh, there, there's a different stage, there's a different resource for preschool, for oh, kids, so okay. for students. That's this nice. is the adult version. I, I, I read the adult version, but yeah. for our daughter, who was a teenager, um, when we went through this and still is, we, we got the student version. So it matches okay. up, but it's, it's, it's written for them. Gotcha. Uh, so that's a great resource. You can also find some other good resources at lifeway.com. Just go to yeah. that website and uh, in, in the search box there, just, just put family devotion mm-hmm. and uh, some, some great uh, resources will come up. Something that we don't think about a lot is, uh, honestly, wh- why not just start with a book of the Bible? Right. You know, uh, So leading up to Christmas, our family... Uh, uh, we looked at the book of Luke and, and tried to read a chapter mm-hmm. of Luke every day uh, during the Christmas season. So start with a gospel. Start yeah. with a Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. And uh, that gets you into a rhythm of reading the scripture, of discussing some questions. Here's some, some good questions to ask around the table. What is in the text? What is most interesting to you? Uh, what did you learn about God? What did you learn about man? What is relevant to today? How can I live this out? And who is one person that I can share this story with this week? And um, you, you, you ask those questions, those set of questions that get you into a rhythm as a family of digging into and sharing God's word. And I would encourage you to, to involve family members, especially if you have teenagers or older children. Ask them, what are some, some things in God's word that you want to explore, that you want to examine? And it gives them an opportunity to speak into that. Now, they may have some great ideas. If they don't, you've at least given them the opportunity to speak into that. The last resource I want to tell you about is an app, and it's, it's called Parent Q. You can find this on the App Store. Let me pull it up. And uh, Parent Q, all one word. 
And um, I love this because every week it, it brings up uh, a scripture passage and some questions, especially for those car rides mm -hmm. to and from school and, yep. and sporting activities. These, these are gold. These are our nuggets of wisdom. And, um, you know, the thing that I, I hate about it at the end, it says you have the number of weeks left until your teenager leaves the house. Know, and so right. it's, it's a great reminder that uh, we, we have just a limited time mm -hmm. to pull back the arrow before we fire it into the world. And so bottom line. Uh, you know, throughout the year, our family ministries team, we, we want to provide some resources like we just did the 12 days of Christmas. There'll be some others throughout the year, but we want to partner with parents. Right. The parents are the primary disciples of the children, uh, but Fruit Cove is a great church and a great partner in that discipleship process, and we're just privileged to uh, partner with the parents and families at our church. Yeah, and it's been such a blessing to be here. Uh, my kids, of course, are a little younger, and so we do apps, we do books, uh, we use version, do verse of the day. There's a, there's a little kid's version of the version app that we use. And, and just like you were talking about, once you get in that rhythm, uh, your kids are really good at keeping you accountable in that rhythm. They'll be like, Dad, we haven't done our devotion yet, or we haven't prayed before the meal yet. And of course, then that's super embarrassing and you have to deal with it. Uh, but Jonathan, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any more questions, please uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, for more information about Fruit Cove Baptist, you can find us at fruitcove.com. If you would like to submit a question or some interaction from us here at the Parent Life Podcast, you can email us at parentlife at fruitcove.com. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week.